Emotionally detached parents, they're quite interesting. You know, they want to be free of the responsibility of raising a child. They want to be free of the responsibility of raising an adolescent. And unfortunately, they also want to be free of the responsibility of just having to be present in that adult child's life. It takes a lot to be a parent. And even if you aren't a parent, you don't really have to be one to know that it is a stressful job. Just think about it, right? You have to try to lead and guide and teach. And sometimes they're going this way when you're trying to go that way. And sometimes they're intentionally oppositional defiant. Other times they have mental and behavioral problems that make them very difficult to deal with. So I think we can all sympathize and empathize and say, okay, this is a hard, hard thing to have to deal with in, in your life. However, that doesn't give a parent the responsibility to emotionally and psychologically check out. And so in this video today, I'm going to highlight some things that they may do to emotionally check out. It's something that I'm sure you have dealt with. If you are on my channel, this channel is about trauma, informed care, families, dynamics. And so I'm sure you can relate to this video. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. For all of you who are subscribed and for those who are new, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our growing and validating community. And let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Tamara. I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist, but I'm also licensed in mental health and I specialize in treating children, teens, and families, as well as adults, right in my private practice. Let's jump in. Emotionally detached parents can, you know, be described as parents who emotionally and psychologically detach from the child that they either have been entrusted with the responsibility of raising or they have brought that child into the world via birth. You know, uh, these kind of parents are just difficult because no matter what you do, whether that's therapy, um, kind of like an intervention, um, you know, if you write letters to them, if you beg them, if you plead with them, you know, if you promise, if you bargain, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, it's not going to help you get the kind of parent that maybe you always have wanted. And sadly, that is just the reality of having an emotionally detached parents. Now, most emotionally detached parents also tend to be immature. So you're probably going to see a series of behaviors that I'm going to talk about in the next video. Um, but if you go ahead and check this video out after you watch this whole video to the end, um, you will see that, you know, these kind of parents also aren't really, uh, what's the word? They're not really ripe enough for psychotherapy. And I talk about that in that video. I'm going to put it in the description box below also um, so that you can kind of see that um, after this video. But, you know, these kind of parents are not good for psychotherapy because they're not ready. They're not able to grow. They're not able to reflect. They're not able to take responsibility and be, be accountable. You know, um, something is just not there and you can sense it, right? You can sense it on the inside that something's just not right. They're not clicking with you. They're not emotionally tuned in. They're not psychologically tuned in. You are simply on your own. So let me highlight some things that you are likely to see if you have a parent who is emotionally detached. So the first thing I think we need to be highlighting here before we get into everything else is, you know, these kind of parents are very inflexible. They don't know how to be giving, loving parents at the heart. Now, this can get a little bit complicated because I think some people um, associate good parenting with providing, and that is not the case. You can provide for basic necessities. You can buy them things, right? You can buy your kids things. You could give them anything that they want. That it doesn't mean that you are an emotionally tuned in parent. And so uh, these particular parents do not realize that, okay, thank you for the car. Thank you for the clothing. Thank you for the, you know, the, the spring recital that I was able to participate in. And thank you for sending me to the best school on earth. And thank you for paying my college tuition and my car note. And thank you for getting me that job last week. They don't understand that, okay, while I am thanking you for that, it still doesn't mean that you're a good parent. And so these particular parents, you know, they really do have their own theory carved out over here um, of the kind of parent that they feel that they are versus who you think they are, believe them to be. And so you're going to have one view, they're going to have one view, and it's going to be a view that's going to clash, you know. 
Um, so these particular parents, again, they're inflexible. They don't know how to give. They don't know how to give and take. They don't know how to um, be compassionate and empathic when it's needed. They want what they want. They believe their way is the only way. And you're going to go along with it or wish you had it. And so uh, these particular parents just, they are emotionally and psychologically difficult individuals. They're like a, a Rubik's cube, you know. Um, they are just not capable of being any other way that they are than they are. Okay. Um, the next thing that I see is a low frustration tolerance. Okay. These kind of parents do not have what it takes to to manage their own emotions, right? They usually have very rigid and negative thoughts and those thoughts almost become like obsessions and those obsessions almost become um, like something that's on their back, constantly riding them, you know? And so they get overwhelmed by that and then they can't let go and they can't let go of the anger. They can't let go of the thoughts. And so then they explode, right? Or they become impulsive or they hold a grudge for so long. They have a very, very low frustration tolerance. They don't have what it takes to, you know, let that anger go, let that pain go, let that regret go and move on. They just constantly struggle with emotions. And sometimes they have what's called intermittent explosive disorder. Here's the definition of that right over here. And sometimes um, that particular diagnosis is triggered for absolutely no reason. Um, but for the most part, it's like this quick emotional outburst that lasts 30 seconds or less and it's from zero to 100, and they don't know why it happens. They're not always clear on the triggers, but all they know is that they can't tolerate the frustration. So there's a low frustration tolerance, all right? The next thing is emotional instability and emotional liability, okay? So basically what I mean by this is that they are constantly like a roller coaster. They don't know how to stay one way. They typically don't stay one one way. You, you know, you may call this individual, um, a Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or a an Eve from the movie Three Faces of Eve, right? With multiple personalities. Um, this kind of, of, of um, emotional instability tends to be pretty intense and it's really hard for you to manage as the adult child, as the child, as the adolescent. Um, this parent, you can't just say, hey, don't do this again because I didn't like that or I'm going to call 911 and have the police stop you. It doesn't matter. They're so emotionally unstable that it doesn't seem like anything intimidates them or causes them to want to pump the brakes and say, you know what, I'm out of line. They don't have the ability to pause. They don't have the ability to pump the brakes. And when you can't pump the brakes, you impulsively respond. And that impulsivity can really get them into some tough places, you know. Um, and I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Um, usually it's legal. Sometimes it's ethical. Other times it's just with Child Protective Services. You know, the, the behaviors that some of these emotionally detached parents show um, really are labile. They are constantly switching in and out, changeable. And it's hard for you to keep track of who you're dealing with. Okay, so emotional instability and liability. The next one um, is um, unstable. How am I going to put this? Unstable and stormy relationships. I'm trying to say two things at once. So, so unstable and stormy relationships. These kind of individuals haven't just started being this way, guys. Even though this may be your mother, even though this may be your father, they didn't start this way. They didn't just get this way. They grew up this way or they became this way as an adolescent or they became that way when they turned 18, which is usually the start of when most mental health conditions and behavioral problems start up. But these, these individuals, these parents, so-called parents, didn't just get this way. They've been this way, they developed this way, and maybe some of the behavior that you're noticing in your, your relationship with your parent is learned, right? And what I mean by learned is that they have observed this behavior in their own environment or they were treated the same way. And they're just repeating those patterns in their relationship with you. You can also, you know, kind of, um, um, conceptualize that as what's called reenactment. So they're kind of taking what happened to them in the past and they're bringing into the, they're bringing it into their future and they're reenacting it in the relationship with you, right? It may have happened with your parent and his or her father, but now they're reenacting it in their life with you. Okay. Um, so unstable and stormy relationships. The next thing that you're likely to see is attention seeking. Most of these emotionally disturbed parents are also immature. As I said a couple minutes ago, 
ago. So, you know, what do immature people do? Well, they attention seek, they get flustered and frustrated over things that they shouldn't. Um, they get really stuck and they kind of perseverate on things that they should not. Um, they hold grudges, they can't move past them, they don't grow, they don't change, they don't reflect, they're terrible for psychotherapy. These kind of parents, right, really do struggle when it comes to attention seeking, immaturity, and kind of like these these childlike emotions and needs that they have. And you may see these kind of parents get jealous of you. You may feel like your mother's jealous of you or your father, or they're living their life through you in some way. Um, you may also feel like they're trying to drive your life, right? Like they're in the driver's seat and you're the passenger. That's another way to put it. Um, you may feel that they are jealous of your marriage. You may feel that they are trying to get your attention because the grandchildren have come along and you can't give them attention like maybe you used to. So now they're gonna act, so now this parent is gonna act out and try to get as much attention as possible. Like these particular individuals will go to great extents to get their needs met. And unfortunately, if they are attention seeking, they'll do whatever they need to do. Uh, the next one is emotional and psychological absence. Now, what I mean by this is that, okay, they're present. They come to every wedding, every funeral, every graduation, every party, every holiday, every get together. They're always texting. They're always on the phone. Um, they may not even talk to you verbally. They just may text you all the time. Despite all of that presence, they are psychologically and emotionally unavailable, meaning that they're not there when you need them the most. They seem to check out emotionally and psychologically when you are going through a tough time in life. When you are grieving and you're hurting and you're depressed and you're angry and you're lonely, they can't get involved. They are only there as a shell right? They're shallow participation. They are not individuals who, you know, can, can be present in all those other ways and also show up emotionally and psychologically. They don't know how to do that and they can't do it, okay? They're kind of stuck and, and can I say regressed in their emotional and psychological development. So you're not going to get the kind of parent that's going to say, you know what, I'm so sorry that we lost grandma, you know, spend the night over here so that we can get through this together. This is, they don't do that. Okay. They're going to be distant because they don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it. Um, a lot of these parents too may have learning disabilities. They may have ADHD that's been untreated. Um, they may also have been neglected and abused as a child themselves or have some kind of unresolved trauma or they could just be really spoiled and entitled, right? So it really just depends. It's a spectrum and you have to know what end of the spectrum your parent is on. Okay, last but not least, guys, I think it's important for you to keep in mind that these particular parents also show a refusal or an inability to see reality. They blind themselves to reality. They block reality. They don't want to see the truth. They can't accept the truth. So they create their own reality and they do whatever they feel that they need to do to make life comfortable for them and unfortunately that could put you at great um that could put you in great danger i should say you know emotionally psychologically maybe even literally you know they don't want to see reality so they lie they cover up you know they 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 you know lead false lives they they display characteristics of themselves that's not true right they may be very narcissistic and self-absorbed um really have a hard time empathizing with other people and being flexible um so, you know, I think, you know, as I've gone through these different definitions of an emotionally detached um, and immature parent, I think that you can um, conclude that these parents are at the core um, organically or inherently unhealthy. You know, they're not a typical parent. This is not a typical parent by any stretch. Can we all show traits of these things? Definitely. Can we all show some, some of this in certain situations and times in our lives? Absolutely. What you want to keep in mind, okay, is that these particular individuals have been this way for a very long time. It's a persistent and chronic pattern of behavior that never seems to change. Thank you so much for being with me in today's video, guys. I encourage you to give it a thumbs up. If it was helpful, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us and that bell button so you know every time I post a new video. I will see you in the next video. We're going to continue on talking about therapy and family dynamics and, you know, really trying to understand the human being in psychotherapy. So we're going to continue this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.